Hey guys, ever wondered how to effortlessly scrape listings from Facebook Marketplace for all of your needs? You might think it's a complex task reserved for tech gurus, but what if I told you it's as easy as pie with the right tools? Stick around and you'll discover a step-by-step -step guide that transforms this seemingly daunting task into a breeze, all with a twist that will have you automating the whole process in no time. So first of all, thank you for coming back and a big welcome to all of the new subscribers joining us today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jake Dawson, and I'm here to bring you the latest in AI sales automation and workflow hacks in a way that's easy to understand and apply. And as always, remember that everything we cover is designed to help you succeed. These are not just theories, but actionable strategies that you can use right now. Now, if you're new here or looking for even more ways to level up, don't forget to check out the school community link below. Inside, you'll find exclusive make.com templates, including the one that we're using today, that you can import directly and start using immediately. We've built a whole space for learners and doers just like you, where you can ask questions, get direct help, and connect with like-minded folks ready to take action. And of course, you can always subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified of our bi-weekly videos, live sessions, and more. So let's jump right in. Why is scraping Facebook Marketplace listings a game changer? Imagine being able to grab data on homes for sale, secondhand items, or even cars without manually scrolling, copying and pasting like it's 2005. This video will walk you through setting up a Google Sheet to store your listings, using Appify to scrape data, and finally automating the entire process with make.com. Trust me, by the end of this, you'll feel like a tech wizard, even if your last big win was remembering your Netflix password. Now, in this video, this is number three in the Facebook scraping series, which means we've already covered a lot of ground when it comes to web scraping. If you missed any of the previous ones, check the description. I've got links to those so you can catch up. But if you're ready to roll, let's jump right in. First, we need a place to store the scrape data, and for that, we're using Google Sheets. Open up Google Drive and head to the folder we created previously in the videos for Facebook scraping. If you don't have that folder yet, just create one now. It helps keep things organized. Once you're inside, right click, go to Google Sheets and create a new spreadsheet. Name it Facebook Marketplace Scraping. Inside that sheet, we're going to set up our first column. Click into sheet one, which should be the default one that opens up and rename the first column as search URL. This is where we'll store the URLs for the different types of listings that we want to scrape. Think of it like a shopping list, but instead of groceries, it's filled with links to wherever we're tracking. Real estate, used furniture, cars, you name it. Now, let's grab some actual search URLs from Facebook Marketplace. Open Facebook, click on Marketplace, and in the search bar, type in what you're looking for. Let's say you're tracking houses for sale in LA. Type that in and hit enter. Once the search result loads, copy the URL from the address bar. So quick tip, if you see something like sort by or radius in the URL, these are filters that Facebook adds to your search. You can tweak these manually to fine tune your results later, but for now, just grab the whole URL and paste it into your Google Sheet under search URL. If you want to track multiple searches, like houses in LA, cars in New York, and furniture in Miami, just add each new URL into the next row. Next up, let's create a second sheet to store the scraped data. At the bottom of Google Sheets, click the plus sign to add a new sheet. Rename this one to Data. This is where Appify will dump all the scraped listings, so we want to keep it separate from our URLs to keep things clean. All right, now that we've got our Google Sheet set up, it's time to bring in the magic tool that's going to do all the heavy lifting for us, Appify. If you've never heard of Appify, think of it as your personal web scraping assistant. Instead of spending hours copying and pasting listings, Appify grabs all that data for you, organizes it, and delivers it like a perfectly wrapped present. And the best part, you don't need to know a single line of code to use it. First, let's get to Appify. If you don't have an account yet, sign up, it's free to start, and you'll get some free credits to play around with. Once you're in, look to the left-hand side of the screen and click on Store. This is where all the available scrapers are listed. In the search bar at the top, type in Facebook Marketplace and hit Enter. Now you'll see a bunch of options, but the one we're looking for is Facebook Marketplace Scraper by Appify. Click on that 
This is hands down the best option because it's reliable, cost effective, and it does exactly what we need it to do. All right, now let's set up the scraper. You'll see a text field labeled Facebook Marketplace URL. This is where we paste the links we added to our Google Sheet earlier. So hop back onto your sheet, copy the first search URL, and paste it into this field. If you want to scrape multiple searches, you can add more URLs later, but for now, let's just test this one out. Before we run it, let's quickly check the settings. Scroll down and you'll see options like max listings. This controls how many listings Appify will pull per search. If you're just testing, you can leave it at the default. But if you want to scrape a lot of data, bump it up to something like 100 or 200. Everything else can stay as it is. Now comes the fun part. Click the save and start button to rent the actor. You'll see a progress bar pop up and depending on how many listings it's pulling, this could take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes. While it's working, grab a coffee, check Instagram, or sit back and feel like a hacker for a moment. Once it's done, boom, here's all your scraped data. You'll see things like listing titles, prices, location, and even image links all neatly organized. But here's the problem. Right now, this data is stuck inside Appify. We need a way to send it straight to our Google Sheet automatically. That's where make.com comes in. If you've never used make.com before, think of it as the middleman between your tools. Instead of manually copying data from Appify to Google Sheets, make.com does it for you. It's like having a virtual assistant that never sleeps or never asks for a raise. First, open up make.com and log in. If you don't have an account, Sign up, it's free to start, just like Appify. Once you're in, look at the left-hand side of the screen and click on Scenarios. This is where we build our automations. If you're new, your screen will be blank, but don't worry, we're about to change that. Now look at the top right corner of your screen and find the Create a New Scenario button. Click it, and this is where all the automation magic happens. Now before we add anything, let's give it a proper name. Click at the top where it says Untitled and rename it to Facebook Marketplace Scraper. You'll thank me later when you start building more automations and need to keep things organized. Now, the first thing we need to do is connect Google Sheets because that's where we're going to store our scraped data. Click on the plus sign in the middle of the screen to add a new module. In the search bar, type Google Sheets, then select Search Rows. This action will allow make.com to look for new listings in our spreadsheet. Now, it'll ask you to connect your Google account. If you haven't done this before, click Add, then log in with your Google credentials. If you already connected Google Sheets before, just select the correct account from the list. Once that's done, it'll ask for a spreadsheet ID. Basically, which spreadsheet we want to use. Click the dropdown and look for Facebook Marketplace Scraper. That's the one we set up earlier. Next, we need to pick the right sheet. It'll probably default to sheet one, but if you renamed it, make sure you select the correct one. Now hit save and boom, Google Sheets is connected. All right, now let's bring in Appify. Click the plus sign again to add a new module. This time type Appify in the search bar and select run an actor. This is the action that tells Appify to start scraping whenever make.com runs this scenario. Now, just like with Google Sheets, we need to connect our Appify account. Click add and it'll ask for an API token. If you don't have this yet, don't panic, it's super easy to get. Click on the link they provide and you'll land on the API and integrations page. Scroll down until you see your personal API token and you'll see a long string of letters and numbers. This is your key to connecting Appify to make.com. Click the little copy icon next to it, switch back to make.com and then paste it into the API token field. Then hit save and just like that, Appify is connected. Now we need to tell Appify what to scrape. In the Actor ID field, click the drop-down and select Facebook Marketplace Scraper. This is the same one we set up earlier. Next, look for the Run Synchronously option. This is usually set to No by default. Change that to Yes. Why? Because if we don't, Make.com will move on to the next step before Appify finishes scraping, which means we could end up trying to retrieve data that isn't ready yet. And that's like trying to eat a pizza before it's out of the oven. It doesn't work. Once you've switched it to yes, hit save so we don't lose any progress. Now, we need to configure the scraper with some JSON instructions. If you're not familiar with JSON, don't worry, this isn't coding and we're not going to write anything. We're just copying and pasting like pros. Go back to Appify and open the actors page for Facebook Marketplace Scraper. 
At the top, you'll see two buttons, Manual and JSON. Click the JSON button. This will open up a block of text that tells Appify what to do when it runs. We don't need to understand what this all means. We just need to copy it. So highlight all of it, click on Copy. Now switch back to make.com and inside the Appify module, look for the Input JSON field. Click inside the box, then right click again and select Paste and Match Style. This ensures that we have the correct formatting. Boom, Appify now knows exactly what it's supposed to do. But there's one thing here we need to fix, the URL. Right now, the JSON file has a placeholder URL, which is not what we want. We need to replace it with our actual search URL from Google Sheets. Find the placeholder URL inside the JSON. It's usually in quotation marks. Delete that placeholder. Now look at the right-hand side of the screen where make.com shows the Google Sheets output from earlier. Find the search URL field and click on it. This will automatically insert the correct URL from Google Sheets into our JSON instructions. Now every time make.com runs, it'll dynamically pull in the correct search URL instead of using the static one. Once that's done, hit save. This locks in our changes so nothing gets lost. All right, now it's time to retrieve the scrape data from Appify and send it over to Google Sheets. For that, we need another module. Click on the plus sign next to Appify, type in Appify and select Get Dataset Items. This tells make.com to grab the actual results from our scraping job. Now we need to tell it which data set to retrieve. Click inside the dataset ID field. You'll see an option for the default dataset ID. This comes from the first Appify module we added earlier. Click on that and it will automatically link this step to our earlier scraping run. Next, let's set a limit on how many items we want to scrape. Right now, we don't need to pull thousands of listings. We just want to test things out. Inside the Appify module, find the Limit Items field and set it to 20. This will keep things fast while making sure we get enough data to verify that everything is working. Later on, when you're ready to go big, you can increase this to any number up to 100,000. But for now, let's keep it light. Now hit Save so these settings don't disappear. All right, time for the big moment, running the scraper. Click Run Once at the bottom of make.com and let it do its thing. Depending on the search and the number of listings, this can take a few seconds to a couple of minutes. Grab a drink, do a quick stretch, or just watch in admiration as your setup starts pulling in data like a pro. Once it's done, we need to check the results. Click on the Appify Get Dataset Items module and open the output. You should see a list of scraped listings, each with details like title, price, location, and image URLs. If you see an empty dataset or weird results, Go back and check the search URL in Google Sheets. It might be broken or not formatted correctly. If the data looks good, we're ready to move on. Now, let's get this data into Google Sheets automatically. Click the plus sign next to the last module to add a new one again, and in the search bar, type Google Sheets and select the action, add a row. And this will send each scrape listing into your spreadsheet. Next, we need to connect our spreadsheet. Click on the spreadsheet ID field, and search for the Facebook Marketplace scraping sheet we created earlier. Inside that, choose the sheet named Data. This is where all the listings will be stored. Now, we have to match the data from Appify to the correct columns in Google Sheets. This part's important, otherwise you'll end up with a mess of data that doesn't make any sense. Start by mapping the search URL column. Click inside the search URL field and then look at the right hand side of the screen where the Google Sheets module shows previous outputs. Find the search URL from the first search rows module and select it. Now let's bring in the listing details. Click on the listing URL and select the corresponding value from the Get Dataset Items module in Appify. Do the same thing for listing title custom title, listing price, and photo image URL. Just match each one to the correct data point from Appify. Next, we're going to create a video link for listings that have videos attached. Some Facebook Marketplace listings include a video, and if we want to track those, we need to generate a proper link that leads directly to the video. To do this, write this link format and then add the listing video ID from the Appify dataset. This will create a direct link to the video for each listing that has one. If a listing doesn't have a video, this field will just stay empty on the spreadsheet. Now, let's add location data to our results. 
In the Get Dataset Items module, look for the last column labeled Location. This is where Appify stores the location data for each listing. Click inside the field and make sure it pulls from the correct column in Appify. Once selected, hit Save to lock in the settings. All right, time for the final test. Click Run once and let the full automation process execute from start to finish. This will scrape the latest listings, send the data to Google Sheets, and update everything automatically. Depending on how many results you're pulling, this could take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes, so sit tight. Once it's done, let's check the results. Open up Google Sheets and see if everything looks good. If you're tracking multiple types of listings, try running different searches on Facebook Marketplace and letting the automation process them one by one. Now, this is where things start to get really useful. Once you have all this scraped data, you can start running different types of searches to build a complete data set. Maybe you want to track house prices in different cities, compare secondhand furniture listings, or monitor car listings over time. All of this is possible by just adjusting the search URLs in your Google Sheet and letting the automation handle the rest. If you want to take this a step further, you can use the collect data to generate insights. For example, if you're scraping real estate listings, you could track price trends over time or see which neighborhoods have the most listings. If you're tracking used electronics, you could look at the average price ranges to determine the best time to buy. The possibilities are endless. And that's it. You've just mastered the art of scraping Facebook Marketplace listings with ease. Whether you're hunting for real estate deals or scouting for secondhand treasures, you now have a powerful tool at your fingertips. If you run into any issues or you need more help, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to assist. If you found this video helpful, even a little bit, make sure you give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more easy to follow automation tips. And if you're serious about taking your automation game to the next level, check out the school community. It's linked below and inside you'll find exclusive templates, resources, and a supportive group of like-minded people ready to help you succeed. Plus the exact template that we use today, it's in there, so don't miss it. Oh, and before you click away, here's a video you'll probably want to watch next. It's packed with even more tips to help you crush it with automation. I'll see you there.